Can you explain us what is the Civil Society Forum on Drugs? The Civil Society Forum is an expert group of the European Commission consisting of 45 different uh, civil society organizations in Europe, uh, all working in the field of drug demand reduction. And it's an expert group on drug policy issues and provides feedback and advice uh, to the European Commission. For example, when it comes to the development of the European drug strategy or the drug uh, action plan, but also when it comes to specific issues like vulnerable groups and when, for example, with the COVID-19 crisis, we prepared statements as well. We have four different working groups currently. One working group is focusing on EU drug policy specifically. Uh, one working group is focusing on international drug policy. So they're very much engaged uh, in the Commission on Narcotic Drugs and they also provide regular policy papers which support uh, the European Commission in international drug policy issues. For IDPC, it's been a really great way to engage with the EU on international drug policy issues, in particular the EU's position at the UN. So IDPC has been coordinating a working group on international drug policy advocacy and engagement. Um, and uh, over the past few years, we've been able to influence some of the positions that the European Union has been taking at uh, key UN fora like the Commission on Aquatic Drugs, the CSFD is definitely a body that is worth engaging in for European organizations that want to do a bit more in terms of advocacy with the EU and um, European countries. We have one working group on linking the EU drug policy and also the work of the civil society forum to the national level. And currently we have one working group you know, which focuses on uh, minimum quality standards in drug demand reduction and in the new mandate, which has already started, this group will be replaced by one focusing on cross-cutting issues and emerging issues. For example, gender-specific issues, women, but also other vulnerable groups. We can only have good and effective policies if we... Um, base them on a knowledge and understanding of what's actually happening in the real world. And I think that's what civil society um, can bring uh, to drugs policy. I mean, first of all, it's the knowledge and understanding of um, the experience of people who are using drugs. Um, people use drugs are the same as everyone else. Uh, it's a very extremely common form of human behaviour. Um, and as we know, a really significant majority of people who use drugs, it doesn't cause them um, any particular problem. And then a um, minority of people who use drugs do become addicted and have difficulties. And I think that leads on to the second kind of area. I think civil society, it's essential. It brings its knowledge and understanding to it. Uh, and it's linked to the first one. It's around the context of drug use. Do you know, if someone uh, develops an addiction, but they have good, what we call, you know, social capital, which basically means you have, you have a job, you have a home, you have um, supports around you, you have access to some kind of income. And, um, the, the response you might need or the shape of the response you might need would be a completely different um, to a person who is from a much, much more disadvantaged background. You, again, you can't have you can't have a knowledge and understanding of drug use and its impacts without understanding the context. And again, that is something that civil society is really uniquely placed to bring because our civil society society groups they operate across all of those different contexts and, and bring an understanding of all of them and I think the third thing civil society really is is strong on um, is bringing a knowledge and understanding of evidence-based responses and again that's that's really key. The EU has developed a, a EU drug strategy and an action plan which actually um, yeah operationalizes the strategy into more specific objectives and actions. All member states have committed to this uh, strategy, but that doesn't mean that um, they can be held accountable for that. We uh, really uh, push member states to implement um, strategy and the action plan. And I think that NGOs and civil society play a crucial role in that. The EU drug strategy can be an advocacy tool for national advocacy and it can probably also hold national governments accountable for what they are doing in the field of drug policy. Rational drug policies could not exist without the civil society.
However, it's up to you to force it. It's not going to do itself. Because civil society active participation is only way how to assure evidence-based approach and clients-oriented services. So fight for it. And finally, because civil society involvement in drug policy is essential for successful intervention at local, national, and also European level, but you have to take care of. So civil society forum on the drugs is your voice in European Commission. So use it. Can you explain the process uh, of the adoption of the new EU drug strategy and action plan and how civil society was involved in that and what experiences you had from that uh, process? So in principle, the, the, the last EU drug strategy and action plan was uh, uh, civil society was very well involved and uh, could contribute um, really in a, in a very good way. The, the last strategy uh, was developed by the Commission in first instance um, without really providing civil society with uh, opportunities for input and feedback. And it was also that the member states were not uh, uh, involved in the draft version. And this actually... Um, yeah, caused some irritation or some criticism, uh, which finally made that the horizontal drug group uh, under the German presidency decided to draft a new drug strategy. And we are happy that the, that the civil society forum was able to contribute to, this, uh, to the drafting of this document. Can you highlight one of the, uh, some of the most important uh, recommendations which were adopted and accepted by the decision makers? Mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, first of all the inclusion of civil society in the implementation of uh, different services, mostly harm reduction services and also the strategy includes a provision saying that um, appropriate level of funding should be also provided uh, to, uh, to um, civil society organizations to make them able to involved in the, in the provision of service, uh, of different services. And what I personally think is very important is that uh, harm reduction for the first time kind of deserved um, a separate chapter. So it's not already in this strategy, it's not anymore included in the demand reduction under the umbrella with, together with prevention and, uh, and uh, treatment and recovery, but it has a own separate chapter uh, with, with uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, four specific strategic priorities. Does the new uh, strategy and action plan mention vulnerable populations? It does. It mentions uh, several vulnerable populations, uh, mostly young people, uh, also their families, uh, families of people who use drugs, uh, and women. So uh, in the context of treatment especially, uh, the special needs of women and the need for development and implementation of services uh, which, uh, which respond to the specific needs of women are, uh, are mentioned. CSFD member organizations boast quite different views on the reality discourse in the drug policy, representing a diverse groups, group of experts to the EU Commission. Apart from that, we at WOCAT stand for the separationist approach, where women and men are not homogeneous groups with single aims and needs when it comes to prevention, treatment and recovery. One size does not fit all. As a part of the Civil Society for Hormone Drugs, WOCAT has been working on putting the specific needs of women on the agenda of the EU through the Civil Society for Hormone Advocacy work. WOCAT stands for a drug policy action plan to be designed from a woman's perspective, to ensure that treatment of addicted women is respectful, gender and culturally specific, and trauma-informed. We have actually succeeded in making these points a part of the EU Action Plan on Drugs 2021-2025. Drug policy work within the framework of the CSFD last year 
have resulted in the report on the quality standards of treatment and quality standards of civil society involvement inter alia. Bokat considers that the result of the civil society work in regard to the specific needs of women were reflected in the new priority areas addressed by the EU Action Plan on Drugs published in 2020. This is a big step forward. What about those innovative harm reduction programs such as drug consumption rooms, drug checking services? So they are mentioned exactly in that way, as you just said, so like innovative programs. Uh, there is no naming of drug checking services. There is no naming specifically drug consumption rooms. So the strategy um, calls for inclusion and development of this kind of services, but, but doesn't, doesn't say exactly what kind of services are considered these innovative services. I am happy to be as a peer worker and a community representative to the Civil Society Forum on Drugs. The Civil Society Forum on Drugs educates and prepares the most powerful drug policy advocates. It is 50 years since Richard Nixon declared the war on drugs, a narrative that devastated millions of lives. And it is also 40 years since the first AIDS diagnosis and what followed after that. And we still, some lessons are not yet adequately learned. Lessons like the benefits from the meaningful involvement of the directly affected communities to the design and the implementation of policies that also directly affect our lives. We are advocating in a very hostile environment in a landscape of prejudice and social exclusions. And we are practicing harm reduction, sometimes against all odds. The work we collectively do in Civil Society Forum on Drugs is extremely helpful, not only because it provides us with the appropriate legitimization as drug policy experts, but also because it provides us with tools for an efficient national level advocacy. People with the lived experience are drug policy experts by definition. And after so many years, our slogan remains the same, nothing about us without us. We joined the Civil Society Forum on Drugs because we strongly believe in the meaningful involvement of civil society. Unfortunately, there are vulnerable groups that are invisible in our communities, in our societies. I'm referring to children whose caregivers use drugs problematically, whose needs are totally unattended. The only option they normally might have are being separated from their parents with huge suffering for them and for parents as well, and with negative consequences on both, or being totally ignored, abandoned, and stigmatized. There is also another group of vulnerable people whose voice is often not listened to, and their difficulties underestimated and unaddressed. I'm talking about people in recovery, those who decided to keep using for many different sometimes personal reason, but often do not have an identity and find it very hard to get their place in society. There are millions and millions of people in recovery around the world ready to give their positive contribution to society if they find welcoming and not judgmental communities around them. Similarly to the issues related to children whose primary caregivers use drugs, also, the necessity of creating conditions which are favorable to the full social reintegration of people in recovery should unify all the members of the Civil Society Forum on Drugs, as all of us, I think, care about people with drug and social exclusion issues. Our organization, Parsec Cooperativa Sociale, has been interested in harm reduction since the early 90s and has been um, a member of the Civil Society Forum on Drugs, CSFD, for some time. 
for us, uh, civil society is the place where, uh, through discussion and uh, participation, we can change the structural causes of the problems that, that uh, affect the lives of uh, people uh, who we ask drugs. Looking at what causes harm also must include looking at harms that are caused not just by the drug use or the addiction, but also harm caused by bad policies. Because, again, um, you know, that that has to be part of our knowledge and understanding is that policy isn't neutral. Civil society, we we have to engage with policymakers, you know, because the, the kind of knowledge and understanding we have is essential to the process. But we do have to engage with them in a way that's evidence based, but that also maintains that independence independent kind of critical voice that that's that's the reason we're there the members come together once or twice per year which and these meetings are covered and financed by the european commission but in principle you can imagine if we really want to do meaningful work and uh, do something uh, with more impact we realize that we need more financial uh, resources and support we agreed to have uh, to put forward an application uh, under the DG Justice uh, Drug Policy Initi Initiative Program. We have had now two projects, uh, each of them for, uh, for two years. The current project will end in 2022, January 22. And unfortunately, we will not have any uh, project funding afterwards, which also means that the CSFD, as it is now, will not no longer be financed uh, or additionally financed uh, through the project funding. And this is problematic because we have seen that uh, we were so much more meaningful impacting in the past years. We could really do things and we are slightly concerned that this will no longer be the case. So I think it is now key to discuss with the Commission and probably also with the Member States and how far they are willing to support the civil society, not only in words, but also in, in acts or in actions. So I sometimes have the feeling that civil society organizations in the drug policy field are somehow not seen or acknowledged as real experts. The same applies to people who use drugs, that I think there are not seen as uh, equal partners. When we talk, for example, about cancer, I'm sure uh, it would be very normal to involve uh, a patient organization. And I always feel that in the field of drug policy, but also in other areas linked to this, we somehow have the feeling that we need to apologize for the fact that we want to provide input and knowledge. Politicians and policymakers need to acknowledge that, at least and listen to what we have to say and what we have to share. So we have a right to sit at the table. We have a right to sit at the table and to be heard. Thank you.